Don Perry produced the music. They love their dad so much. Man shouldn't have to live like that. They broke him out of jail, but turned loose a killer based on a true story. He's a maniac, don't you understand? Robert Mitchum, a killer in the family. Rental discretion advised. In 83, uh, you did a TV movie of the week, uh, A Killer in the Family, which starred Robert Mitchum and a very young James Spader and Eric Stoltz, who deliver great performances as his sons. Catherine Mary Stewart also makes a cameo as Spader's girlfriend a year before uh, Night of the Comet. Uh, this movie is based on a true story of the Texas killer, uh, Gary Tyson, uh, played by Mitchum, who manipulates his sons into breaking him out of prison and then proceeds to go on a murder spree. It's an interesting TV movie uh, uh, with some great performances by some great actors. It's also got a, a good score. And this was a one-time collaboration with composer Gerald Freed, I believe. I was just wondering if you had any memories uh, working on the film. And I was also wondering, you know, how you approach uh, working, you know, with a new composer or or a, a one-time uh, deal like this, as opposed to working with your typical uh, uh, musical family. You know what I mean? Well, uh, two things about that one. I think Wilford Brim Brimley was in that too. Um, uh, the first thing when I saw that picture was, um, you know, I had seen a lot of Robert Mitchum uh, pictures growing up, but. Just the professionalism of him. He was a brilliant actor, I think, underrated. And um, working with a, with Gerald, generally speaking, the first meeting is the toughest one. You sit down. Uh, he was already chosen for the picture. That was a Taft project, and Karen Ullman wanted him for that, but I was the music supervisor. So, but immediately you sit down, you talk about how you want to work. Uh, we've looked at the picture, how many musicians you want to do, how we're going to take it, where do you want to record it. You get to know each other. And by the time you get to the scoring session, you have a pretty good idea of his mindset. And of course, you listen to stuff that he's done. So I didn't have, I don't have any problem, didn't have any problem with a, a new composer to me, you know, and he was a pro. But the interesting memory is, uh, again, I was blown away by the acting in that picture. But Coincidentally, later, we took, Andy and I took a trip to London to uh, do a score over there with a big orchestra, and they paid for us in first class. And in first class was Robert Mitchum. And we had a chance, Andy and I, to talk to him off and on for eight to ten hours on that trip over to London. Oh, wow. The man was an incredibly brilliant man he talked about uh roles that actors had in terms of um world war ii and and korea uh in not only helping the troops but uh things that they did that helped the war effort um he just had a, a treasure trove of stories throughout his career fascinating man and you know not talking down to us we were uh Andy was standing with him at the bar. He kind of drank his way across. Uh, I stood there for about four hours, three or four hours, and finally said, guys, I have to sit down. You know, I can't. Uh, I didn't get a first-class flight to stand all the way to London, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but um, that was a, one of those uh, rare surprises in your life where uh, you admire someone all your life, and all of a sudden, you're right there, and... He, he just rolled, you know, but um, he was, uh, you want to talk about a menacing guy on screen when he was a villain, um, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. And and being next to him, he was pretty imposing. I, I wouldn't have wanted to get on his bad side. He was uh, a pretty rough looking guy.
is no escape. The Boogans. You worked with James L. Conway many times, you know, from Grizzly Adams to many TV movies, you know, Sleepy Hollow, Last of the Mohicans, you know, The Lincoln Conspiracy, to name a few. But, you know, obviously a huge TV producer, but he also directed some cult films, you know, Hangar 18, Earthbound. And then The Boogans, of course, which was written by David O'Malley. Uh, and I particularly loved that as a kid for many personal reasons. Uh, David O'Malley won't remember me, but uh, he was a friend of my mother's and uh, she ran a restaurant that she owned in this small little town called Evergreen in Colorado. And he used to come in and they were friends with my mom and the whole crew that, that worked there in the restaurant. <laughs> um, so I, I would bust tables when I was a kid and I would talk to David O'Malley and he might remember my mother. I'm sure he doesn't remember me, but I was a huge fan of the Boogans. My mom went to like the premiere of that. I remember the local premiere. And uh, I remember chatting with him and other people too um, at the time. I was so young, but I loved monster movies. I loved that movie. So I chat with him about it constantly. And he even, David O'Malley wrote a script and a pitch treatment for a TV show uh, called Mudslingers that was about my mom and all the girls, all the women that worked in her restaurant. Because it was a restaurant that was run by all uh, single mothers um, that were raising their children, you know. Uh, right, right. And, and he wrote this uh, this script that we still have uh, with photographs. Uh, I mean, they're bad photographs, you know, they're Xerox, but of my mom, I'm actually in some of the pictures. Um, and it was just a great experience. And uh, the Boogans always held a special place in my heart. I have uh, the original poster and all that. So I was just, you know, can you please Tell us how you began working with James L. Conway and, you know, share just any memorable stories you have from working on so many productions. If you have anything and everything on the Boogans or anything, I would love to hear yeah. it too. <laughs> well, uh, well, Dave O'Malley uh, became a good friend and we, uh, a few years ago, had a really good lunch and everything. He wrote a book and I, I'm sorry, the, the title escapes me. It's terrible that I don't remember the title, but if you go on... Oh. Amazon and go under David O'Malley. It's it's an incredible book about a group uh, stuck in a small town. It's a rock and roll story, um, and I can't think of the name of it. But oh, cool. he also has a project that we haven't given up on yet that in, involves a, a first Beatle tour and everything. Uh, he's a great writer. Uh, Jim Conway, I, I would encourage people again to go to jameslconway.com and take a look at his website. Um, he's, he's not only a producer, director, he's written three books, novels. Uh, he developed a character called Rubber Ducky that uh, is now a series of children's books. And he's a world-class photographer on top of everything else. But like all of the people at Sun Classic, I just met Jim because he was working on a project. And... Uh, you know, we were all starting out. I had a little more experience than they did. The thing about Chuck Sellier is that he gave, he, he found talent. He knew he was a, a very strong guy. He knew exactly what he wanted with film and music. But he was smart enough to let young, talented people go. He, he moved them up. If they were uh, writers and, and wanted to produce, learn to produce or direct or, you know, uh, they worked their way up. Um, Jim, uh, I, I think Boogans was the first major project that he was able to direct. This was a feature. Um, he liked the idea. Um, you know, he was great to work with. Uh, again, aside from being, I, I don't think I met anybody there uh, because we all started out at the, at the same time that wasn't a great guy. Uh, Jim was a little nervous. Again, the, the funny thing about that is um, none of anybody in that whole production situation, Sun Classic was originally formed as Schick Sun Classic, and they had the Schick Centers in Salt Lake City where people came to dry out from uh, booze and drugs and alcohol. There was nothing of that when we first started. Nobody could even have an ashtray around or anything like that. So this was a quote, adult movie, and there was a new scene in it, which was 
uncomfortable for everybody, <laughs> and, and especially Jim. He had never shot one, you know. So I, I remember that comes to mind right away because of the nervousness of something that none of us had ever done and, and knew how to do, you know. So, um, but he's he's one of the most talented, as I said, when you think about the range of things, everything he touched, he was good at doing, and uh, just made a lot of friends. People had no problem uh, recommending him for something, not only because he was great, but he was just a great guy, just fun to work with, and uh, I can't say enough about uh, Jim. I'm still in touch with him. He's always been very gracious with me. He's, he's said some really nice complimentary things about our work over the years so it, it's it's nice to have a a two-way uh respect for what each other does but those two guys you mentioned dave o'malley and and jim conway they boy what a what a thrill to work with those guys on a daily basis as i said we did uh, uh with jim uh maybe 20 projects you get to know someone pretty well uh when you're when you're doing that so uh, sure, I don't know what else to say about them. You know, uh, uh, specific incidents. I don't. I don't know. They kind of meld together over the years. Just the overall feeling of uh, what a what a great thing it was to work with a guy that talented and that gracious and that much fun. A great sense of humor. Still does. Still makes me laugh on uh, things he puts on Facebook with Rubber Ducky. I don't know if that's the inside stuff you want. You know, but. I don't remember anything jumping out on the filming of that picture that uh, was unusual. You know, uh, Jim didn't hire himself for the picture, for instance. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chuck hired him. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's thumbnail with Jim. But, again, I would encourage people to go on his website and just look at what he's got on there and what he's done and, and follow him because he's he's still very active. I don't. I don't know if he'll ever retire. He just goes from one creative thing to to the next. I thought it was interesting that he did tons of Star Trek stuff, Next Generation, and tons of other stuff. And then um, Seth MacFarlane, the creator of Family Guy, hired him to do his other show that he um, created called The Orville, which is like sort of a it's almost like a comedic spoof on um, on Star Trek. So I thought that was a smart move on Seth MacFarlane to hire. Jim Conway as you know someone who did tons of Star Trek to bring that look and feel over to his show I was like that's that's a very smart move that is that's cool. yeah and it's a wild it's a really successful show I, I haven't seen it but reviews are through the roof and it's got a huge following and people it's love hilarious it. yeah. I've seen a few episodes it's funny it oh have you oh, yeah it's yeah it's funny it's yeah. very funny well, you guys should talk to each other and find out what you've seen, you know. <laughs> well, maybe you guys should do a show and interview each other, you maybe know. And, uh... That's a good idea. <laughs>